Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage two of Tour of Romandy. 170 kilometers, about 105 miles in length. Now, hopefully you viewers tuned into yesterday's Butterfly Effect and agree with me wholeheartedly here today at this moment that Ethan Hader, Team Enios, race leader here at Tour of Romandy, was a complete knucklehead on yesterday's stage one. Not only do I believe he was a complete knucklehead throughout yesterday's stage one, I think he's a knucklehead at the end of here at stage two. So make sure you tune in all the way to the finish and then leave a comment whether or not if you agree with me or not. Now, up front when the racing starts with 80 kilometers to go, I'm sitting on the couch having breakfast and it's more bad news for Team Enos because Garrett Thomas, their new race leader for Team Enos, not race leader on general classification, but race leader for Team Enos because Ethan Hader crashed out of yesterday's stage now Garrett Thomas was penalized 20 seconds for taking a bottle just underneath the 20 kilometer to go sign on yesterday's stage one. That'll put Garrett Thomas, last year's race winner here at Tour of Romandy, more than 35 seconds behind Rowan Dennis from Yumbo Visma, race leader here starting at stage two. Now, when the racing gets going, we're going to see a breakaway of four riders up the road. Tom Skunes, Trek Segafredo, Baptiste Planker from Intermarche, Diego Lopez from Kern Pharma, and Niels Bruin from the Swiss national team represent the break here at stage two. Their gap was over three minutes, and Yumbo Visma were pulling the peloton behind for Rowan Dennis, race leader here at Tour of Romandy. Early in today's stage two, Rowan Dennis, Yumbo Visma, will give an interview talking about his first goal was to get the race leader's jersey. I saw a lot of comments on the channel last night about Rowan Dennis. If he just went a little bit later, he could have won the stage. But I'm here to agree with Rowan Dennis. When you're racing for general classification, stage race victories are nice, but you always want time first. Get the jersey, get as much time as you possibly can on as much of your competition as you possibly can, and then Rowan Dennis can seal it up later and have a little bit more cushion on these mountain stages, and maybe even a little bit more cushion might be needed on that final day time trial because it's uphill for the last eight kilometers. So 100% here on the Butterfly Effect, I'm agreeing with Rowan Dennis' tactics that yesterday's stage one was 100% success. Now, when we come back into today's race with 60 kilometers to go, there's an Ethan Hayter signing, and he's at the front of the peloton wrapped up around by his Enos teammates. Now, clearly he got a talking and a beat down from his DS directors last night after the race finished for racing at the back of the peloton throughout the stage. And now today, here at stage two, he's learned his lesson and he's at the front of the peloton. Folks, not only is he at the front of the peloton with 60 kilometers to go, but there was never a time when the cameras were on that I saw Ethan Hader at the back of the peloton at today's race. So with 55 kilometers to go, with the break of four crossing today's finish line with one more lap to complete, they got a one minute gap on the Umbo Visma led behind. With 45 kilometers to go, the course will narrow there. The peloton will stop at the front and slow down with Yumbo Visma. It'll cause a bottleneck behind and all the riders will have to click out of their pedals and stop and wait on the road there until the front of the group starts to accelerate. I bring this up because shortly after that, Fernando Guevara, UAE Team Emirates Sprinter, will flat. When he flats, he gets a bike change, pushed back on the road by his mechanic, and now you look at the gap in front of him. Clearly there was cars being held up behind or possibly had to go around on that narrow road because there's no more cars in front of him as you see a massive gap between Fernando Guevara and the peloton in front. He'll look over his right shoulder, he'll wait like every true professional does, his team car will show up, he'll jump on the bumper, and then shortly after that one of his UAE team members will come back and pick him up and drag him back up to the peloton. When Fernando Gaviria gets back up to the peloton, that's when the racing really starts to shine here at stage two of Tour of Romandy because DSM along with UAE Team Emirates get on the front and they start driving it. With 38 kilometers to go, Tom Schoons and Niels Bruins from the Swiss national team will split from their breakaway companions in hopes of glory here at stage two. It's not going to happen with UAE Team Emirates and DSM pulling full gas back there. And then with 22 kilometers to go, it's Team Enios on the front and they start driving 100%. Now we're in full flight here at Tour of Romandy. Two kilometers later, they'll catch the last two breakaway companions up the road. And then with 15 kilometers to go, when the road starts going up for about four kilometers long, it's Amador on the front for Team Enios. 
We know he's going fast because when the camera pans back to the back of the peloton, it's split up in pieces back there. Up front, Enos is driving 100%. Rowan Dennis, Yumbo Visma, he's doing a great job. He's always surfing the front and always has his Yumbo Vismas near him or in front of him, keeping him in great position here at Tour of Romandy with just under 15 kilometers to go. With 13 kilometers to go, we're going to see Ethan Vernon from Quick Step. He's got a couple teammates in front of him. He's one of the fast sprinters here at Tour of Romany. Quick Step's trying to get him back on, but they're not going to see the front again because up front, Enos is relentless as they're driving the pace here, trying to blow up all the fast guys and send them out the back. Ethan Haters at the front with his Enios teammates here on stage two. Like I said, he has not been seen at the back of the peloton throughout today's stage, and he's racing in fantastic position every moment of the race near one of his teammates up at the front here at Tour of Romandy. With 12 kilometers to go, the peloton's getting small, and up front, it's Luke Plack. Luke Plack from Team Enios has got the peloton completely strung out. We're starting to see splits happening up front in the peloton. You go about 30, 40 guys back, and you start seeing the splits. The peloton was already small to begin with, but Luke Plack has got it drilled out. Single file line, and everybody's suffering here at Tour of Romany. At 8 kilometers to go, there's a left turn coming up. Enios will lead into that left, and then they'll shut off the gas. We'll see the team fan out across the road. As they do, we start seeing other teams come to the front because it's Bahrain victorious on the front and they're driving 100%. Rowan Dennis, again, surfing through the front of the group here. Always looking after himself, always keeping himself in perfect condition. With five kilometers to go, it's curb to curb in the peloton. Under three kilometers to go, it's Israel Premier Tech that has the lead here at Tour of Romandy. It's Rowan Dennis near the front. Sepp Kuss is just a little ways behind. He'll ride up, grab his race leader, take him to the front here at Tour of Romandy, and then it'll slow. Sepp Kuss is built a little bit like me, so he can't do much of a lead out at the front. He did about 100, 200 meters, and then it's AG2R that takes over the front. Now, when the cameras fan further back, we're going to see the Enos rider, Ethan Hader, along with Magnus Sheffield, the young American rider, back there with Bahrain victorious. When Bahrain victorious accelerate, Magnus Sheffield, we'll see him look left over his shoulder. He finds his sprinter, Ethan Hader, jumps on the Bahrain victorious train that's heading to the front, and then Magnus Sheffield takes over with one kilometers to go. Now, let me remind you guys, he was basically in the win from 1.4. Now, at one kilometers to go, Magnus Sheffield, the young American, 20 years of age, he's on the front driving it as hard as he can. He has Ethan Hader, their sprinter, from Enios, yesterday's race leader here at Tour of Romandy that raced 100% at the back of the peloton. Now he's sitting second wheel on his teammate's wheel with 900 meters to go. With 800 meters to go, it's Luke Platt just behind his two teammates on the right side and Trek Segafredo, John Aber Astory that's boxing out trying to get Ethan Hader's wheel. John will get the wheel. Luke Platt will then box with the UAE Team Emirates rider. I believe it's Mark Hershey back there. Mark Hershey will eventually win, and Luke Platt will slot back in the fifth position. Now, this was a great tactic from behind for Luke Platt to be helping out his sprinter, Ethan Hader. He can't do anything on the front with the lead out anymore, so he's causing chaos back there. I agree with it 100%. Now, with seven, 600 meters to go, it's Magnus Sheffield on the front, still driving as hard as he can on the pedals. 500 meters to go. Sheffield gets out of the saddle and starts with last big sprint here at Tor Romandy Stage 2 with Ethan Hader on his wheel. 300 meters to go. The American kid is still on the front lead. Now Ethan Hader with 250 meters to go. Ethan Hader looks over his shoulder, sees he's got to start accelerating soon. Couple meters later, Ethan Hader gets on the pedals and starts jumping as hard as he can. Trek Sega Freighter rider John Aber Astory is accelerating on the left. And Fernando Gaviria has come into the picture. He was way back when the sprint began with one kilometers to go, but he's found his way up to the front. Now up front, it's Ethan Hader, Trek Segafredo's John Aberastri on the left of him, and Fernando Gaviria trying to find a way to win here at stage two of Tour of Romandy. It's late, but he's in with a shot. When they cross the line, it's the Enos rider, Ethan Hader. Shh. He's shushing the crowds. Guys, I can't believe it. 
He's winning the stage. It was a fantastic stage win. It was a great redemption after yesterday's knuckleheadism. And now he had this amazing lead out. His team looked after him beautiful throughout stage two here at Tor Roma. The Magna Sheffield delivered a magnificent lead out that started realistically back at 1.4 kilometers to go. Luke Platt, who had done an amazing job of sweeping the wheel and causing chaos back there. Ethan Hader, who was getting ready to win his second stage here at Tor Roma after winning the prologue on day one, was going to make a beautiful stage win. And the young 23-year-old Ineos rider is shushing us. He's certainly shushing us because of yesterday's debacle, knuckleheadism of riding at the back of the peloton throughout the stage. Now he thinks it's his right to shush the crowd, to shush all the people that sent him negative social media stuff last night for the way he raced in the race leader's jersey at the back of the peloton for the whole stage too. Now he's crossing the line, which would have been a great win. But the 23-year-old kid is so immature that he thinks it's his right to shush the crowd and shush the viewers for acknowledging what a knucklehead he was on yesterday's stage one. So here, getting ready to take a beautiful win to show how he's listened to his directors last night to tell them the proper way to race his bike, how he's taken the criticism of yesterday's stage one debacle, and now he's going to shush all of the fans, all of the viewers that complained about the way he represented the race leader's jersey here at Tour of Romandy on stage one, and he's going to shush everyone to come through for an ugly victory here at Tour of Romandy. Now, I call it ugly because he's immature. He should have never been shushing. He raced yesterday incredibly bad tactics, and it was an ugly race yesterday. And then today, instead of crossing the line and just manning up and saying, wow, I raced bad yesterday. Look at my race today. I heard all of the debates yesterday. I listened to my directors who drilled me all day long. I did everything correct today, and I won today's stage. I am a great rider. I appreciate all the work from my teammates of what they did today. Instead, he wants to shush everybody. Now, let me remind you, Ethan Hader, what a knucklehead you are. Because tomorrow when we get into the mountain stages, two days from now when we get into the big mountain stages, now because you're down on general classification, Garrett Thomas, who has been racing at the front here at stage two and helping you win today's stage, now when you look at the further stages, when you look when the general classification favorites are, would have been attacking you if you had the race leader's jersey, Garrett Thomas could have always pulled that card out. As Rowan Dennis is going up the road, tacking, trying to win here at Tour of Romandy on stage three and four, Garrett Thomas would have always had the card to pull out and go, hey, I got Ethan Hader back here. He's race general classification leader. I don't have to pull it all. Now, Ethan Hader, because of your knucklehead tactics on yesterday's stage one of losing the race leader's jersey because you rode at the back of the field throughout stage one, now Garrett Thomas has to attack Rowan Dennis instead of having the card to pull out of. I don't have to do any work. We have the race leader's jersey here, Ethan Hader. I don't have to do anything. So Ethan Hader, as you're shushing the whole crowd with your finger up there, as you're shushing us all, think about Garrett Thomas, your teammate. Think about your other teammates who rode the front throughout yesterday's race and throughout today's race for you to win today's stage. So instead of shushing everyone, how about you thank your team for doing such a fabulous work? How about you apologize to Garrett Thomas because in tomorrow's stage three and four, now he doesn't have the Ethan Hader card to pull out when the tacks are going up the road. Now Garrett Thomas has to attack and drop all the GC favorites here at Tour of Romandy if Enos want any hope of winning the general classification. So remember, Ethan Hader, grow up a little bit and don't shush the crowd when you raced terrible tactics yesterday. Clearly, you've seen today about how much benefit there is to racing at the front of the field instead of the back of the field. So when you win today, make sure you thank your directors and make sure you thank all your teammates who rode already two stages on the front for you to be able to win today's stage. Congratulations to Team Enos and their director, Sportis, for a fabulous stage two victory 
team effort victory here on stage two of Tour of Romandy. Hopefully, Ethan Hader has learned something here at Tour of Romandy and will be able to pay back his teammates who he owes for this victory here at stage two by riding at the front from here and the next continuing years in the future to come while riding for Team Enos. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next edition of The Butterfly Effect.